This episode features miniature technologies you can make yourself. Isn't it marvellous? Gorgeous! Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the back office teardown lab. Have a look at this. I think if there's anything that you want to build, it's something like this. This is a little itty bitty 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 terminal. Look at that. It's running back office show. How cool is that? And I thought I'd just tell you how I um, made this, explain it a little bit and the steps I followed and you can do the same. I know it's got the 3D printed case and stuff like that that uh, might be a little bit tricky to get hold of, but really it's not that much of a problem. You know, you, you don't need the case to make this work and actually I can't even get it apart, I'll have to unplug it. So the power is down this long tunnel. So that's not a great design. So this case was one I bought, uh, I say bought, I downloaded off Thingiverse and I've modified. And I'll just tell you why. Let's work out the, all the pieces here. I shall dismantle, dismantle it all. Right. So the first thing I started with was the Raspberry Pi 3 that I was using on my Pi 1541 project. So I put that aside for now um, because I'm not using it. Um, and if you haven't seen one of those, they look like that. So the, I was using the Raspberry Pi for that to sort of do the Commodore disk drive emulation. So I popped that off. We still have these. Um, interesting enough, I just realized I've broken something on here. Oh, well. Now, um, I got this. So this is a Raspberry Pi B+. Plus. You, you've, you know, really any of these will work depending on your usage. The B plus is nice just because it has all the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and everything ready to go. I think I think all of the bees have Wi-Fi though. Again, search. I'm not entirely positive on that. Um, and this is a screen, and it's basically a Chinese clone of an Adafruit screen. Uh, and this is the 2.2 inch uh, screen. It's got. It says, it says it here actually. It's a 320 by 240 resolution, which isn't as small as you think. And it does have a bunch of buttons here and an infrared LED. So if you want to make use of all of those, you can. And then uh, all you do really is you just plop that on here and you plop in a micro SD card. And what I did is download Noobs, N-O-O-B-S, and I installed the full Raspbian. Uh, and then as part of that, you basically uh, can install from Adafruit's website. They've got a whole program, a script called uh, Pi. TFT or is it TFT Pi? I think it's Pi TFT and it really gives you all the options. You can install it for any of the different size screens and you can have them portrait, landscape, rotated 180 degrees, so whichever way you want to use this. And then inside uh, obviously I've printed the 3D case because I wanted to sort of hold it nicely and test out a 3D printer. Um, it doesn't come out great, I needed to sort of modify it a bit, I didn't use any um, support material. And of course, I redesigned the front panel because the chap on Thingiverse was using the much bigger screen. So I decided I'm going to not bother with the buttons. I'll just um, change the size of the front panel. And it doesn't quite line up. So I'm going to go into Fusion 360 at some point and edit that so it does sit a bit nicer. Because you can see there it sits OK. But by the time you've clipped in the unit itself, they protrude out through here. So the whole thing's shifted 4 mil. Um, I did do these rather nice vents here, retro vents to keep it nice and cool. So what I'll do is I'm going to plug it all in together with a keyboard and mouse and we'll have a look at what it looks like. So you can see the setup here. I have a keyboard and mouse plugged into the Pi. It's got its power coming in there and you want a decent sized power supply for a, a Pi 3 otherwise you'll get some sort of errors really. When you first boot up with this screen attached it won't do anything. You'll just see white. That's because it actually needs frame buffer drivers. So you've got to plug in your HDMI and plug it into a proper telly. And that's kind of a cool experience in itself because it's almost like running its own Linux computer. They're very um, capable, these Raspberry Pi 3s. You could just use it almost as a little desktop. Um, 
So how Linux works, or how lots of things work, you have something called a video frame buffer, which is a piece of memory reserved for showing things on the screen. Not so dissimilar than your computers from yesteryear, you know, your 16-bit, 8-bit machines that had dedicated video memory. The CPU can write to that memory, and whatever's on that memory is just refreshed straight onto the screen. So the video driver allows different options. So it allows for the screen to bit, bit basically behave as a terminal, as a text terminal, just a console, and when it's in that mode, you don't get HDMI. It can display just as a frame buffer. So only certain things can use that, like the various media players and things. So you can use that as a frame buffer. And on the HDMI, you'll have the normal HDMI desktop. Or how I've got it here, whereas the HDMI and the screen are displaying the same thing, although the output on the HDMI is limited to 320 by 240. That's fine, actually. It's surprisingly usable, but at least you can plug it into a monitor and do stuff uh, to sort of tune this thing in. I'm going to just try something I've never tried, which is in Linux, if you don't hold down Control Alt, oh yes, cool. So if you don't hold down Control Alt and then the function keys, so I'll just show you, you can see, see me doing it really. Control Alt F1, you can see that's actually a proper Linux terminal. And then as I move through the function keys, eventually you'll get back to the graphics terminal, which is Control Alt F7. So we'll go back to just for fun. Go back to control out F1 and I'm going to zoom right in because I know it's a little bit hard to see. And you could do LS minus LA and it's just proper Linux. So you have to get a squint a little bit if you have got one in person because look, you can see from the size of it. But you could just do all normal proper Linux commands and then check the status and things like that of the unit. It's just bloody amazing, really. I'm just going to try pressing a button, see if it does anything. No, I think the buttons need to be re read from GPIO. So we're going to check those probably at some point in the future. But let's get back to the main desktop. And you can see here, it's actually connected via Wi-Fi. It's associated. You have uh, sound. We haven't got any sound hardware connected. However, because of that hole in the uh, grate here, I might put a speaker behind that when I redesign the front bezel. Um, you do have an internet browser. You do have your terminal. And actually, believe it or not, you actually have games here and you've got Minecraft. So out of the box, you've got a full productivity suite. Look, you've actually got full LibreOffice internet. You could actually just use this for working on if you are that way inclined. Um, but for me, of course, I just look at YouTube all day. Um, now, you can get these in bigger sizes. So you can imagine if this panel is a little bit bigger, it might be a bit easier to use on the eye. Or if you want to, you could write, run RetroArch on here and you can basically um, turn this into a game system relatively easily. Although it is a little bit big, you know, you've got these things going on. You might want to use one of the smaller pies depending on your, your use case. So you can see it actually does run YouTube pretty well. And if I did have uh, a speaker plugged into the analog audio out, that would work fine, no doubt. Um, if you're sort of mounting it, you might want to have a little amplifier hardware and a speaker. So that's what I'm going to be doing inside the case. But it's bloody good, isn't it? I mean, all in all, it's a pretty favorable setup, uh, considering you could use a wireless keyboard and mouse and... Um, not uh, you know not be constrained really by all these things so should we talk about the case for a moment so the case oh. <laughs> so the case is from thingiverse and it's 3d printed now you could use anything really as a case i quite like this one because i thought it would just sit everything nicely like a kind of mobile weather station style thing in fact i don't want to plug everything because wires. Uh, be very careful, by the way, when you're using the uh, SD card based Linuxes, because any write error, you could actually corrupt the card or even brick the card. So it's always a little bit uh, dodgy. You should properly shut down, unlike me just sort of yoinking the power. Now, I do understand there are some builds that try to protect against that a little bit. So look out for those. Um, and also, you might want some standoffs. There is a 3D printable standoff kit for this, for hats, to stop them doing that. I will have to see uh, what options exist, but you can make something. So that just clips here. There's a particular order for clipping these if you don't want to snap this panel. It's very thin, actually. I might, um, might just sort of thicken that up a little. But it shows you how much gap you've got between the screen and the front there. So options exist for you again in that you could get a extension on your Raspberry Pi header here and push that right out. Or what a lot of people do is just get a wadge of clear acrylic and then just put it in there. So you've got literally a thick acrylic piece of the first screen protector. 
But another thing that's a really good option really is just to modify the case because why have this massive gap here? You might as well just change this, make it a little bit thinner. Um, if I take a little bit off this radius here and bring this down, the whole thing becomes a bit thinner and it all just fits a bit better. So lots of options. Because I've printed this bit, which takes the longest time, and this piece here takes hardly any time, I'm probably more inclined just to sort of redesign the front part and how everything fits into that a bit better. And it does lock in. You see these two little locking nubs? They just sort of slide in there quite nicely. Um, but there's no retainment mechanism here for the back. So it's a really good attempt, actually. You can find them on Thingiverse, this case. And I think there probably are some people have done their own reworks of them. Um, you can see I haven't even bothered refinishing it too much because I knew it's it's going to go. Um, but you can see here clearly that's the line there of the screen and you're like a whole five mil out. Whereas here you could just cut, imagine cutting that and bringing that through. So I might remove all these, just shunt them over a bit and then just sort of fix that up there. And probably just put a wadge of perspex. Again, it's all a little bit floppy. Another thing I don't quite like about this case design, I mean, there's some nice things, like you've got the vents, you've got the access to the card, which is great. Um, you've got quite a deep channel there to get to your power connector. So that is a bit of a pain. I mean, you might uh, mitigate that by making something on a block that can wedge in there. Um, also, you can't get to the HDMI, which is, is you know, you think this is quite a big piece of plastic, right? There's nothing really stopping you from extending these out and just letting you get to the HDMI because it's not really going to affect how stable that is. I mean, it might be a little bit lighter with it, but gosh, that's heavy. I mean, that you can hear, you can see how solid that is when it sits down there. So it's a really nice design. Um, if I can get that part sorted out, I probably will use this in multiple ways. So I'm going to tell you how I'm going to use it. One, it's always nice to have a proper Linux machine somewhere in your house that's internet addressable, right? Do that right away. If you want to learn like Perl scripts, Lua script, PHP, all of those things, it's the perfect platform for doing it. But not only that, it doesn't really use any power and it's just a few, it's a couple of watts or whatever and it's just on all the time. Um, it allows you to do things like run persistent scripts on cron in, with your scripting language that go off and do useful things for you and display the results here. So for example, you could fit one of those tiny little uh, pen drive doodads. I've got one somewhere, you know, the little memory cards. In fact, here it is. And that could be logging. So you could plop that in there, one of those spare ports. You've got four, you've got plenty. And you could use that as a file server, for example. So you could just have a little like SFTP type thing running and that could be um, accessible to you, like your own little Dropbox. You could use it for checking on the status for other servers. You could use it for checking on your Twitter accounts or YouTube accounts and putting all the, the stats on there. There's a, or, you know, you could just use it as a file server or a NAS. You know, how about a NAS in your house? So there's lots of things. You are a little bit hampered on a, a Raspberry Pi 3 because they don't have SATA. So if you do need something which has a bit more beef, you could consider an Odroid. But that's virtually a PC at that point. But they do have a very similar form factor. You can see the difficulty, by the way, I've got of trying to get that power thing in. Is it in? Isn't it? No. Um, so yeah, work needs to be done on the case. What I would like to do, once the speaker's on here, I would probably modify this and hollow this out a bit so I could fit some buttons here. I think that if this has got hollow back, or ho some feature here that lets me put buttons here because I want to use it as a kind of bedside radio as well. Because I do listen to digital radio stations. And I'd literally have just like two buttons, maybe three. Uh, one button will be just on and off, uh, and the other button will be to switch through the radio stations. I guess I'd probably need an audio knob as well somewhere for the um, volume. But yeah, you see, you get where I'm going with this. The world is your oyster at this point, and it's all just down to this little bad boy here, really. Um, if you don't want to use a TFT screen, you can use an OLED screen on uh, just using GPIO. There's plenty of POLED screens. You've seen them. I had a whole bag of them somewhere we sh showed you in an earlier video. Very similar to the little things that go on in these sorts of gadgets. So if you just want a little very simple screen, just to give you a bit of an indication. In fact, I'm actually just rooting around. I can know there's going to be one here on something or another. Here's one. This is a Node MCU, but it just happens to be using the same screen. So they're only four wires, or you need to hook that up to a Raspberry Pi. Same thing if you're using GoTex. You've probably seen people with the old GoTex and have the little displays. If you're using um, 
by the way so if you're using anything though that would display normally on the HDMI technically you can display it on here so I was thinking if we take the Pi uh, 1541 interface for example depending it is a bit dependent by the way on the GPIO pins we've used for the um, emulation which isn't a, an awful lot if I remember it's been a while since we laid this out but it's only a few serial pins technically you could use a double gang header on here where you can just push that through so it would have quite long wires coming through so you could combine the powers and instead of using the buttons on here for example you could use the buttons on here and you'd have a really neat system because this will actually display the actual desktop software so if you've got graphical software showing SID waveforms or whatever it is you want on there you could really uh, pimp that out or you know you probably mount this remotely as well if you want you could choose your design of course you know look at that that would work quite well too just offset it slightly you've got the whole the whole power powerful unit right here isn't it <laughs> I quite like the idea of as well some people saying you can use them to emulate IDE or SATA I mean that's crazy good you could get that in my Atari ST then and that'd be the nice Nice little box. I can imagine this could be a nice little external Atari ST looking box and it will have, you know, next image, previous image, select, you know, some options here. And then I can download all the files and stuff to the ST as it's running. So hopefully that's some inspiration to you to go out and uh, just get some bits. And remember that this stuff is just window dressing. If you're handy with your... Um, your skills or you just want to mount this up you can just shove it in a little cardboard box I mean there's a million and one uh, Raspberry Pi cases and they do cases for the particular screens and um, already made some of them so this one for example had a nice box that actually had all of these buttons and cutouts for these ones on the end as well in aluminium it was a really amazing box you could get from China but to be honest the 2.2 inch screen is pretty much unpopular now the Adafruit one do one that's a bit bigger I think takes nearly the whole size and it's really high res everything so you, you've got plenty to play with now and the screen from Adafruit I think it's probably only about 20 pounds I mean that's quite expensive when you compare it to the cost of the Raspberry Pi but it saves you a lot of faff doesn't it really I think these were about $12 from China when I got this one yonks ago again the whole thing's just made out of scrap though I had lying around so yeah so Please go out and make one. Uh, let me know how you get on. Uh, come join me on the Discord and we'll continue the conversation there. As ever, thanks for watching. Just what the doctor ordered. Mmm, glossy.